Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Carl Moretti with Top Rank. I'd like to welcome and thank you as well for coming out uh, for today's press conference for the event on uh, Friday evening. Um, this event obviously is a little bit different for us. Um, we're featuring Michael Conlon in the main event, um, making his professional debut. The only other Olympians really to turn pro in Madison Square Garden were Evander Holyfield, George Foreman, and Jermaine Taylor. Uh, but this is the first Olympian outside of the United States who is literally the main event of what we hope to be an annual card every St. Patrick's Day weekend uh, here in New York City at the best arena, Madison Square Garden. To uh, take us through the rest of the program and introduce you to the fighters, um, a man who needs no introduction whatsoever. He is in his 51st year of promoting fights. And I don't know how, I don't know what fight number this is at Madison Square Garden, but it could be the first St. Patrick's Day one. Uh, Hall of Fame promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. Thank you, Carl. You know, one thing about the sport of boxing, it regenerates itself. Uh, we have in the sport, we are blessed uh, to have the fighters of the recent past, fighters who I remember fighting as if it were yesterday, uh, like Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, Marvin Hagler and George Foreman and Mike Tyson. Uh, and then moving on, uh, guys like uh, Oscar De La Hoya, uh, Francisco Vargas, uh, and others uh, of their era. And now today, uh, we have great champions uh, like uh, uh, Triple G and uh, Gennady Golovkin, uh, Daniel Jacobs, uh, Terence Crawford, and of course, Vasil Lomachenko. Uh, so boxing continues, and this event which we are privileged to hold on St. Patrick's night. And, uh, this event will feature many of the young fighters who will come to prominence in the years ahead. Uh, not with us today, but uh, uh, he'll be fighting on the card, is a young man who was uh, uh, from the United States, but was on the Honduran a team in the Olympics, tremendously fast hands. His record now is 2-0. Teofino Lopez, somebody really special in one of the earlier fights. I want to thank um, uh, our sponsors for this event, uh, who've really stepped up. Uh, every spot on the ring mat uh, will be taken. First of all, Hennessy. Uh, who encourages you to never stop, never settle. Uh, Kidar Capital, uh, Total Splicing Solutions Limited. You see, all three of them are new sponsors who have come in uh, because of the prominence uh, on the card of Michael Conlon, who we'll talk about in a few minutes. When the Olympics ended, we made an effort to go after the best fighters in the Olympics, uh, whether they won medals or didn't win medals, whether they won gold or they won silver, or they were cheated out of getting medals, as a number of fighters were. Uh, and uh, uh, allegations were made uh, of a Russian conspiracy, uh, although I thought the Russians were too busy with that hacking into our election. But, uh, but be that as it may, uh, we looked for the best talent. And one of the fighters that caught our attention right away was a fighter from Brazil, which was the home country. Uh, and indeed, 
he was successful in winning a gold medal. Uh, Robson Kansiekio, I, I can never pronounce it, just let's call him Robson, really, really terrific fighter. And he has a real test on Friday night against a young man who is uh, uh, here uh, with us uh, today from Cincinnati, Aaron Hollis. So, Aaron, you're up against an Olympic gold medalist. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aaron? How y'all doing? I'm not really too worried about him going to the Olympics. That don't scare me. I'm not too worried. Like, as you can see, the back of the jacket says, what? <laughs> too pretty, too slick. I'm going to be slick. He got to catch me. I don't think that's going to happen. So I came to fight, and I'm going to show out. I'm going to give y'all a show. It's going to be a whole lot of wows and OMG, and this guy is nice. I ain't them cab drivers or them bums that stand there and trade punches. I'm coming to work. And you got to catch me to work. Thank you. You know, Brazil, of course, is so well known for its great soccer players and uh, great uh, soccer national team. Uh, but when Robson fought in the Olympics for the championship, it was the highest rated television show uh, of the years. Uh, he, there were about 25 million homes in Brazil uh, were on watching uh, his victory, well deserved, I might say, for the gold medal. So I'd like now to bring to the microphone, he's here with his manager, Sergio Badarelli. Please welcome Robson Cancieco. Hey, Robson. Please. Bom dia a todos. Minhas saudações a todos os atletas aqui presentes. E mais uma vez, muito obrigado a Bob Ar e a Top Rank por acreditarem em mim e estarem cuidando de minha carreira. Good morning to all. Uh, I want to thank you, Bob Aaron, and everybody from Top Rank for taking care of my career. Bom, é, eu fiz uma preparação muito boa, muito intensa para lutar com os melhores adversários do mundo. E houve um imprevisto de última hora que meu adversário não pôde lutar comigo e foi escolhido outro. Porém, eu estou muito bem preparado para lutar com ele. Ok, eu tive um very very nice training camp. I prepare myself to face an opponent. Last minute they change the opponent, but there is no problem because I'm uh, prepared to face anyone the best fighters in the world. Bom, e eu faço isso desde muito pequeno. É, no boxe olímpico eu não escolho com quem eu luto. Tendo um profissional assim será e eu espero lutar com os melhores e surpreender, superar todos. I do boxing since I was very, very little. So in the Olympics, I never can choose opponents. So I don't choose opponent. I will face anyone, and I will be the winner. É, muito obrigado a todos. E se preparem que na sexta-feira vocês verão um belo espetáculo em cima do ringue. Thank you to all, and be ready. On Friday night, you will see a great show. Thank you. You know, some young men, particularly in the United States and also in Mexico, uh, don't participate too much in amateur boxing. And when they become of age to fight, they go into the professional ranks right away uh, because, th frankly, they need the money. Their families need the money. And uh, so they lose out on the Olympic opportunity. Uh, Alex Sacedo uh, is one of those young men. 
He comes from Oklahoma City. Uh, his record, 23 wins and no defeats, 14 knockouts. He is a tremendous fighter, uh, which uh, I am very, very happy uh, to showcase uh, here in Madison Square Garden. Uh, we realized uh, that he wasn't uh, uh, making the progress that his talent uh, dictated, and so we uh, convinced uh, he and Louis Mazzarano to send him uh, to Abel Sanchez, who have started training him, and as Alex will tell you, it's been a tremendous improvement. Uh, he's matched uh, uh, really tough. Uh, he will be fighting uh, um, Johnny Garcia, uh, a young man who uh, knocked down Jose Ramirez, uh, the phenom from Fresno, who's undefeated. Uh, Johnny's record is 19 and 3. He comes from Holland, Michigan. Uh, he's here with his advisor, Butch Hernandez. I'd like uh, Johnny to come to the microphone. Johnny? Hello, what am I saying? Bob, how you doing? <laughs> Thank, thanks for having me here. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity, you know, to fight uh, an undefeated fighter. Um, here at Madison Square Garden, it means a lot. You know, I'm, I've been prepared. I've been training for this fight for a little over two months. So, uh, you know, I'm ready. Um, put on a great show. And now uh, I'd like to bring to the microphone uh, Alex Sosedo, a real up-and-coming prospect, uh, and uh, he's here, I believe, with his trainer, uh, a guy who is making his mark as one of the great trainers in boxing, Abel Sanchez. Uh, first of all, Bob, let me apologize for being late. The traffic out there is... A little hectic. Uh, this is my second training camp with Alex. Uh, we realized we're fighting a guy that uh, put uh, the phenom down in his fight, so we're prepared for a difficult fight. Uh, hopefully, Alex will uh, will show the talents that he's uh, he's developing uh, in our gym. Uh, we realize that uh, this is a big, big opportunity on a great card. So we hope to put on a great show. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very excited to be here. It's my first time out in New York. Um, and I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to put on a show. It's been a long nine weeks of training camp. And like we said, uh, we progressed a lot during these uh, long weeks. Um, and I'm ready. I'm ready to come out and show everyone what, what I'm all about. And thanks, thanks for everyone who came out. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And now the feature bout of the evening. You know, everybody has commented how unusual it is to have uh, a young man in his professional debut uh, fighting a main event uh, in a place uh, as legendary as Madison Square Garden. But Mick Conlon as we'll talk about, means so much to so many people and can do so much uh, for the sport of boxing. But again, he's got to prove it in the ring and he's got to fight top competition. And so for his profess first professional fight, uh, we have brought in a fighter from Denver, Colorado, uh, who uh, has had eight professional fight, uh, is four and four, uh, but is becoming a skilled professional, as will be the fighters that Mick will be fighting. So please welcome Tim Ibarra from Denver. Tim. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first off, I want to say thank you to Bob and Top Rank for having me here. Um, it's a really, really epic place to fight for sure. Um, just want to say that uh, we, we're, we're coming not to, not to let uh, Conlin, you know, have an easy pro debut. We want to, want to show him that uh, the pros ain't the amateurs. Um, trained really hard for this fight. You know, we got the call in January. Been training since. Um, you know, it's gonna be a tough fight. I, I really expect a tough fight between the both of us. Like I said, it ain't gonna be easy. Um, that's that's it. Thank you, guys. Before the Olympics uh, in Rio, when we were looking at the fighters that we might be interested in, uh, Todd DeBuff, who's the president of Top Rank, kept mentioning this fighter from Ireland, uh, Mick Conlon, who frankly I hadn't heard very much of. Uh, and we all said that we'd wait uh, till after the Olympics was over. Uh, and all of us who follow sports and boxing know what happened. A young man who hoped to win an Olympic gold medal uh, was cheated out of it uh, by the politics uh, that's inherent uh, in amateur and Olympic boxing. Uh, and the way he reacted to it uh, really uh, enhanced uh, his reputation uh, and brought a lot of people who might not have been interested in boxing or in him uh, around because people who get screwed over like he did, uh, sometimes don't react, sometimes for the uh, political correctness of sportsmanship are told to say nothing, but Mick so, said plenty uh, with his gestures and with uh, his voice, and that needed to be said. And so after we signed him, uh, with the help, help of uh, our good friend Matt Macklin, uh, when we decided when his professional debut would be, we decided that it would be on St. Patrick's Day. Why? Because those of you, you know, St. Patrick's Day here, there's a green line down Fifth Avenue and people drink a lot of beer and so forth, but St. Patrick's Day is celebrated because it commemorates St. Patrick, who we became, chasing, running the snakes out of Ireland. And so it is really fitting that Mick fight on St. Patrick's Day because he ran the snakes out of Aiba. <laughs> because after he sounded off, but something like 20 or more of them got fired, and a lot of their executives uh, uh, were canned, and hopefully amateur boxing uh, will benefit by that and will, for once, uh, present clean programs. Uh, Mick is here today with his manager, who's known to you all uh, because terrific middleweight fighter, uh, always gave a thousand percent in the ring, a hard guy to beat, won his share of big fights, and he's been a terrific guy to work with. Uh, before I have Mick come up, let's hear a few words from Matt Macklin. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, everyone, for coming out here today. Um, I read an article yesterday, and uh, I spoke with several boxing journalists, and uh, they were all kind of saying that they haven't seen this level of hype for an amateur making his professional debut since way back in 1992 when Oscar De La Hoya made his anticipated professional debut. <clears throat> you know, in my opinion, Michael is the best amateur ever to come out of Ireland. He's certainly the most decorated, you know, he, he kind of shot to prominence in 2012, the London Olympics, winning a bronze medal there, and then really went on a clean sweep of gold medals after that, 
in all the major tournaments, Commonwealth Games gold medalist, European Games gold medalist, and getting best boxer of that tournament, um, world amateur champion. And then really the scene was kind of set that he'd kind of sign off on his stellar amateur career with a gold medal in Rio. And obviously it was not to be. He was uh, very, very harshly treated. Very, very bad decision. Probably, probably the worst decision or certainly the most controversial decision since possibly Roy Jones back in 1988. <laughs> but you know, every every cloud has a silver lining, and maybe the uh, the profile and publicity that came off the back of that. I think when he tweeted Vladimir Putin, it got 70,000 retweets. It went viral. So uh, I mean, that was pretty ballsy in itself, just to tweet Putin. But uh, so I think everyone uh, admired that about him. But uh, yeah, I think the uh, the raw emotion and the honesty in that post-fight interview really kind of shot. You know, really brought his profile through the roof, really, and it caught the eye of top rank. And uh, when they reached out in mid-August, by mid-September, you know, we had a, a deal, deal agreed and, and a contract signed. Um, I think, you know, initially the, there was thoughts that he might make his debut uh, November 5th on the Manny Pacquiao undercard, but I think after, you know, more, more thought was put into it, we realised that, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day really was the weekend that he should make his pro debut, and where else than Madison Square Garden? You know, I think for a long time now, um, Mexican fighters have always been known as the uh, the best, most passionate fight fans in the world. Uh, and as a result, Cinco de Mayo and uh, Mexican weekend in September have always been the two big, big weekends for, you know, doing big pay-per-view events as they do. That's where they do the most numbers. But, you know, I think for a long time now, Irish fight fans have been a sleeping giant. You know, John Duddy, who very well known here in New York, boxed here at Madison Square Garden, many, many times, sell, sold loads of tickets, you know, a real kind of fan-friendly style. Andy Lee, boxed here, always sold well. I myself fought Sergio Martinez here in the theater for the World Middleweight Championship. And, um, but I think the real, the real guy, the real star, the guy who's really woken up the sleeping giant that is Irish fight fans is Conor McGregor. Not a boxer, he's an MMA guy, but he has really shot to superstardom. He's the probably, the biggest star in combat sport, and Connor will be carrying out the Irish flag on mixed ring walk. But I let I let Michael tell you how that came about. <clears throat> All I can say is that I've uh, spent many days, many weeks in uh, California with Mick, watched him train, watched him spar with the likes of Oscar Valdez, Jesse Magdaleno, world champions. Um, you know, 16 and old guys, Emilio Sanchez, and you would not believe that this guy was preparing for his pro debut. You would think that he was a fringe contender or someone that was only a few fights away from challenging for a world title. So I'm um, personally really, really excited about his career. And I think everyone in Ireland is. This fight is also being t uh, shown live in the UK and Ireland on uh, Box Nation and will be shown delayed on Saturday prime time on RTE, which is terrestrial TV in Ireland. If you think of all the people that will be staying in Saturday with a heavy hangover from St. Patrick's Day, you can imagine the viewing figures will be astounding. So um, yeah, it's um, you know we've, it's been a you know I think September now we 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 got the deal done so six months which be uh, you know a lot of uh, juggling balls and getting things in place and organising things but the uh, there's been a massive response here in New York great reaction everyone's really excited about uh, Friday night and not just about Friday night but about about what's going to be an unbelievable journey and when I think in 10 years from now and Mick's career is over and hopefully it's over by then. <laughs> we give, we're going great watching all the, the, the fights, if not by then, but uh, you know, he's, uh, I think he'll go down as probably the, the best Irish fighter of all time and I think it's going to be one hell of a journey and I think Friday night is going to be an unbelievable night. I think the atmosphere is going to be absolutely electric, so I'll leave it at that and I look forward to seeing you all Friday night. You know, I'm from Las Vegas and in Vegas, they put lines up, betting lines, for everything. So, like, for example, uh, the Super Bowl's over, what, a couple of months, and they've already had the lines up for next year's Super Bowl. Uh, you know, one team is 25 to 1 to win, another is 10 to 1, 5 to 1. So there's, a, in the, some race and sports book, there's a line up, for the most beer consumed at an athletic event in Las Vegas. And the favorite, early morning favorite, uh, is uh, Mick Conlon's next fight <laughs> in Las Vegas. And uh, so uh, they're loading up the trucks uh, with beer. 
uh, uh, we're going to bring in uh, in when he fights in Las Vegas, um, many, many fans, Irish fans and other fan, other nationalities from all over, uh, but particularly from Ireland. Uh, and uh, Mick is going to see in the United States uh, what uh, large uh, Irish populations, some of them aren't even Irish, but they claim to be, uh, we have in uh, cities not only not like New York and Boston, uh, but Los Angeles, San Francisco. And so uh, Mick will be meeting a lot of his uh, compatriots, a lot of the expats, and a lot of the Irish people who came to the United States and made great lives for themselves. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have Mick on this program and really have this program because of Mick Conlon. Uh, we think he will be a great star. Uh, I agreed with Todd and Matthew that we delay his uh, professional debut until St. Patrick's Day uh, because of the symbolism, uh, but we're not going to waste time. Uh, remember, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, fought for his second world title uh, in June 1980, less than four years after he won a gold medal. The time that is now spent in building up prospects is ridiculous. They should fight more often, and I really believe that by the time his fourth year rolls around from the anniversary date of the Olympiad uh, in Brazil, that he will be uh, a world champion and will be one of the most prominent fighters in the sport of boxing. It starts on Friday night. It's going to be a momentous night because it is the start. Uh, please welcome one of the great young fighters in the world, uh, Mick Conlon. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you all for coming and turning out. Uh, I've had a long training camp. It's been great. It's felt like it's been forever. I've been signed up with top rank since September, so it's been a long time. This, is feel like, this feels like it's been a long time coming. You know, I'm looking forward to going in there and putting on a performance on Friday night. I know there's a, a lot of hype around it, but it's not going to make us believe the hype, and it's as simple as that. Tim, Tim's going to come to fight. You know, he's 4-4. Four and four. He's at a full training camp, and, you know, he's a hungry fighter. He, he wants to put bread on his table, and unfortunately for Tim on Friday night, I'm going to have to knock him out. It's as simple as that. Uh, I have to look good doing so. And, you know, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great night. We have Connor coming out with me. Uh, who's going to carry the tricolor? You know, I asked him at an event in Belfast, and he says it would be an honour. So we've been in touch, and he, he arrives in, I think, tomorrow or Friday. Uh, and, you know, to have him, the, one of the biggest stars, probably the biggest star in combat sports at the minute, uh, carrying the tricolor in for me. And he's a national hero also. So, you know, uh, it's a complete honour. I'm very grateful. Uh, I want to thank Top Rank and Matthew Macklin and, and MTK Global, my, my management team, for making this opportunity uh, possible for me. You know, I'm probably rambling on a bit and talking a bit fast here, but at the same time, it's my, my first time standing in front of a, the big stage and before my professional debut. So, you know, I'm looking forward to Friday night. I hope you all tune in, or I hope you're all there, because it's going to be a serious atmosphere, uh, big, big event ahead. And, you know, what lies ahead for the future, I'm, I'm ready to become a three-weight world champion. Uh, I truly believe I will, and I will be Ireland's greatest ever fighter. And it starts off Friday night with me uh, beating Tim Ibarra. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. Just a couple of notes. Tomorrow, uh, we'll be making an announcement about signing uh, yet another of these terrific young fighters. Uh, this man, a gold medal winner in the Rio Olympics. I promised uh, his management that I would hold the announcement until tomorrow, 
but it will be made tomorrow. Uh, as you can see, we at Top Rank have signed the best young fighters in the world, uh, and we're going to be showcasing them in the months and years to come, and it will be a terrific ride for everybody. The weigh-in tomorrow will be, uh, let me see, uh, will be here, here at what time? Report 2 o'clock? Report at noon, be on the scale at 2 o'clock, and the card starts here on Friday night, what time? 7 p.m., and it's going to be, everybody coming should come for all the fights. Really, it's a terrific card of seven fights, and uh, everyone, uh, every fight uh, is uh, significant. So I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank the beautiful ladies, the top-ranked knockouts. The, you know, as cold as it is outside, they warm up the building. <laughs> it's true. An old guy like me can say it. Young guys should agree. All right. Thank you all for coming. Today.